So something you did have success with was this study where you isolated the queen? The brood break. We yeah. call it the BOA. The, the, the brood, BOA? BOA. Brood, it was a brood break oxalic acid, so BOA. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Um, we always like to make little fun. Well, we things. talked about it a little bit before, but now you actually have some data on that? Yeah, we did. And okay. so it was actual work um, that Lewis and I did. Mm -hmm. Lewis has been so gracious to help me. This is a PhD chapter for my mm -hmm. dissertation. So we took the queen, we moved her above a queen excluder into a super that was either honey bound or had no, was just foundation. Basically nothing, giving her only one frame that she can lay on. I did not want to cage the queen like Cameron Jack. He did this kind of very similar study down in Florida. Nothing against Cameron, but I didn't want to cage the queen because yeah. he had really bad... Um, uh, mortality, uh, co colony mortality after he caged that queen and he caged her for 21 days and then applied oxalic acid when everything was broodless. So did he have colony mortality yeah, or colon, queen, yeah. queen mortality? Colony mortality. The, he did not have good col uh, colony health going into winter. Okay. Um, he lost a lot. Out of, and that they only trialed 10 colonies. Um, but so we, what we decided to do was keep her laying, so we gave her one frame, so she's still producing QMP. Just one super frame. Yeah, well, one barely sorry. any area at all. Yeah, like a it was a, it, actually they were shallows, so she had a shallow frame that she was laying on, and then everything else was honey bound or undrawn, and we only kept, we only kept her above that that excluder for 14 days, mm -hmm. and then we removed the excluder, let her come back down. And so, we, um, and then on day 21, we came in and used the oxalic acid. So, what happened to the frame that she was laying on? Thank you. We removed it. Yeah. We took it out and gave it to another colony. Okay. So, why? What's the difference? Why was Cameron getting colony mortality? You weren't hatching. She wasn't laying anything that became bees for that colony, yep. and neither was his. So, what's the difference? I think the stress on the on the queen caging her for 21 days uh -huh. uh, and not allowing her to continue laying eggs and continue moving that QMP. Uh, to be honest, I should probably read his paper again to look and see if they did. Was it queen mortality, like you said, or was it specific colony issues? But I do know that he did not recommend doing that in late. It was a November, October, November. So I think, yeah, I should have read up on this. Right. There's an October, November study that he did. Um, so he did not recommend this type, of, this this uh, treatment protocol. And, yeah, and there's a few reasons for that. One is, as Jennifer mentioned, you're disrupting the queen's natural behavior. You're caging her in a very small area, which is going to do all sorts of unusual things to her. Queen manipulate pheromone production and things mm -hmm. like that. I think also something that happens there is if you're caging the queen down in your deeps in your brood box she's getting hit with that oxalic acid vapor oh, right. much more heavily and she can't move away from it um and i, I think be from cleaned a, mm -hmm, as easily potentially and then finally as well just from a scaling up perspective finding and caging queens is very labor intensive yeah and for some beekeepers really difficult mm -hmm. whereas the whole point of this was we could just slap a queen excluder on the bottom of these supers, shake all the frames in, and you don't have to find the queen to achieve this then. She's stuck above the Right? You know that she's yeah. stuck above that excluder. You never actually have to see her. Okay. But um, most of the time, we would we just found her. We did for the, yeah, for the purpose yeah. of the experiment we, we to just make find sure her, that what we were doing was okay. legit. So, but. so once again, explain ex the timeline exactly what you did. So on day zero, uh -huh. we went in, we found the queen, and we put her above, or above the queen excluder, and that was the day, that's the day we started the experiment. 14, on day 14, we came and we removed the queen excluder. Mm -hmm. We also, on day 7 and day 14 and day 21, we looked and counted queen cells to see if we got an increase of queen cell production downstairs, especially. Even though there's still QMP moving, we just wanted to make sure. We found a couple of colonies that had a queen cell here and there, but on average, none, hardly at all. So that was not an issue. Okay, so Mr. Statistician, run us through the math on that. Why day 14? Oh, so that's, I mean, that's not so much statistics. No, as just know, knowing your own if you biology, yeah. right? So 
typically, we understand 21 days from an egg being laid to that worker emerging from her capped cell. And that follows quite a specific order of events um, where you have typically two or three days as an egg, and then some days as a larva, and then um, about 14 days as capped. And really that larval stage is what changes based on the weather. So we know down here or in Louisiana, the whole thing takes more like 20, 19 days, maybe 18 days if you're in parts of um, the southeast or Texas, whereas the 21 comes from more kind of New England, uh, colder regions. But regardless, the whole point there is 14 days, no eggs being produced or anything. That gives enough time for everyone in the colony to um, have either hatched or become capped. You then re-release the queen, she starts laying again, but those first seven days where she's laying, that's not fast enough for any of those eggs to grow and then become capped. So you've had a full 21 days of cycle, so it's just a way to engineer that you have no capped brood. Okay, so <clears throat> pull the excluder on day 14 and do yep. vaporization on what day? 21. 21. So seven days after you Are we missing excluder. a day or two of possible drone brood? Now we could, mm. yes, and that is something since we were doing late summer, our drone production was way down. If you're doing oh, early yeah. summer or early summer, you're going to have a much higher yeah, drone sense. number. Thank you, you could also hold her for three more days. For longer. Right. 14 was the minimum we could hold okay. back yeah. to achieve this. So, in order, if there was drone brood present, if you went to 17 days, you would accomplish that yeah. too. Right. Okay. And thank you for bringing that up. Another thing, too, which he mentioned, you know, when we say they, they will emerge on day 21, well, that's the average. You know, you mm -hmm. look at the bell curve, some are going to do 22, some are going to do 19, depending. Okay. And it's temperature, nutrition, humidity that all goes into play. Yeah. I like to say that bees don't always read the book. A, no, yes. Really yeah. So there was something that I, uh, we did notice on some of the colonies that as we were going in and oxoliking and looking for queen cells, we, did, we still had cat brood on day 21. And I think it was because it was, um, it had, it, we were missing. It wasn't a lot, uh, but we missed some. Mm -hmm. There was still some, and it wasn't drone brood. And I think that's from yeah, what you were saying. Just we a were, handful. So what's the results? What's the data say? Um, it looked good. I mean... Uh, good as in... We got... Now, again, we're not... This isn't the silver bullet. We're not going to drop down 99.9% .9 of the mites in the colony. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you're including it into an IPM management scheme, um, I think it would work brilliantly. Now, um, but again, the beekeeper is going to have to put a little time and effort into oh, man, it. Oh, yeah. And it can't, you know, in the good old days when we could just open the lid, throw something in and walk away, I don't see us ever going back to that point. Um, we have way too much resistance. We have way too much issues with timing and temperature and 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 contamination and resistance i said that twice. so if you had to if you had to give me a your best guess on the efficacy of that treatment what would you guess oh, that's his th this is his yeah. favorite so <laughs> so we have two we did two measures here okay. we monitored um varroa using alcohol washers as we always do um, and compared our four different treatments technically so we have our control colonies where we do nothing um, and mites, as we'd expected, went up during that time. We have our colonies where we caged the queen, so we pr prevented reproduction for 14 days or so, um, but didn't hit them with any oxalic. We've got one where we hit them with oxalic, but they had just as much brood as they would without doing anything, because we didn't do anything to the queen. And then we have the combination treatment, which is really what we're testing. Um, and across those four, col those four treatment types, um, we monitor varroa levels, but we also did um, pre and post sticky screens. So we were monitoring mite death in the 72 hours prior to hitting them with the oxalic, and then the 72 hours during and post. Um, and it's that sticky screen data that is by far the cleanest. And what you see is that for the um, control colonies and the colonies where you interrupt the brood but don't do anything else, 
there's no difference in how many mites are dying pre and post treatment day, as you'd expect, because you're not hitting them with any oxalic acid vapor. But the proof of the kind of proof in the pudding is that the increase in how many mites are dying um, when you hit them with the oxalic acid vapor compared to the control colonies. If you've got a bunch of brood present, you get maybe a five-fold increase in mite death. But if you've interrupted the brood and then hit them with the oxalic acid vapor, it's more like a 20, 25 fold. So that for me, if we were able to do something like this, the month of August would be perfect just before the bees start to build up for winter because there's really a less brood in there anyway. Mm -hmm. The queens have slowed down. Um, that would be the time for us mm -hmm. to do it and then let the queen out and let her start getting ready for winter. Mm -hmm. Right. And, if, and like I said, if we were to repeat this again, which I, we may, and I would like to, um, I would like to do it in earlier Mm -hmm. You know, when, say, you're making nukes or you're making your splits yeah, yeah. or yeah. you've just dumped a package into your colony, you could come in. I and mean, there's so many ways that, that we can manipulate yeah. using oxalic mm -hmm. acid when colonies are broodless. If you're requeening a colony. Um, requeening with a queen cell. Queen yeah, cell. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those, yeah. and, and that, that's something yeah. in the commercial operations can do very well. Yeah. But I'd also, I'm also thinking we probably should have done a double, a double treatment. Um, to see if we could have gotten even just a little bit more. So is there ever a study that you do or a research project? That, is there, do you ever get to the end and not say, I wish we would have done such and such? <laughs> I mean, do you ever get to the end and say, we did everything we needed to do? I, no, I don't <laughs> think it's so much about saying, I wish we'd done this. It's obvious once you have your results, what the next steps are. Yeah. Yeah. If this hadn't have worked at all, then we wouldn't be saying, okay, well, we also need to try this, this, and this. So, right? And you mentioned you might have some uh, some slides I could include. Yeah, that yeah make, I'll, I'll send you sense. the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, he made some really nice oh, ones. Well, perfect. Yeah. And with this, yeah. we did see in the combination treatments, when you're hitting them with the oxalic acid, when there's no brood, you do see those colonies come out of the experiment with a reduced number of mites compared to when they started. Mm -hmm. So you are actually driving the population number down there, unlike some of these other methods mm -hmm. where we've kind of only ever held it steady. We're actually managing to really knock yeah, the mites We down. don't have a number like, is it 80% efficacy? Are we getting 90% control? That kind of, because again, th those numbers are so misleading because it could, it, what is that telling you? You mm -hmm. got 90% control will win. What was the size of the colony? Was it a nuke? Was it a, you know, three double D? I mean, you know, there's so many other factors that go into it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think we need to be cautious too, how we word things like, like Lewis is saying, you know, is it, is it necessarily a control or is it change in our mite population? Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. We saw there was definite change in mite population. Okay. So.